Hey everyone, how you living? Hope you're alive in living color. Hope God is good to you, and he, as he's been good to me, because you're watching EML 77 TV. Forgive me, I just woke up and just uh, getting ready to go to church here, as you can tell me when I'm dressed. Today is September 1st, 2019. That's right, September. That signals that the schools, uh, that the summer vacation is almost over for the school kids out there, and most of them have went back to school a week earlier to get a head start. Not only that, to make sure they get out on time next summer. Uh, some big news coming out of this, um, coming out of this, the Wellness City Festival is going to happen the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th of next year, 2020. Keep those dates in mind. If you want to volunteer, go see Mike Sylvia on Facebook. He is the president of the festival. Go to the Wellness City Festival uh, Facebook page to uh, if you if you're a vendor and you want to be um, take part of it. Now you have all year to do so. Don't do anything last minute. Don't delay. But to others, keep the dates in mind. And uh, but anything can happen next year. All right. So uh, let's talk about. It is September first, two thousand nineteen. Forty years ago, the WWE decided to introduce a new title and decided to have a, a South American tournament to determine its champion. The two finalists for that tournament was Pat Patterson and a pre-million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, who was the WWE's last North American champion at the time. Pat Patterson defeated Ted DiBiase not, not only to win the North American title, but win the South American title giving birth to a brand new championship that is called the WWE Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. That's right. The Inter 40 years ago, the Intercontinental title was born, with Pat Patterson being the first Intercontinental champion. Over the years, this title has been a very sought-after title, a very prestigious championship to the point Where, uh, where a lot of superstars use this title as a launching pad to, to superstardom, to world championship status. Some has, has, has not had the uh, unfortunate opportunity to become a world champion, but nonetheless, this title is a workhorse championship, one of the most prestigious championships in, this company's, in the company's history. Very well sought after. Over the years, a lot of superstars and Hall of Famers have held this great title. So, what I decided to do in honor of the 40th anniversary of the Intercontinental Championship is to give you my personal top 20 favorite men that have held the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. Now, this was a tough list for me to even do. There's a lot of great superstars because a lot of them went on that world title status and superstar status, main event status, but these are my first, now I have honorable mentions as a result, I should have done a top 40 favorite intercontinental champions, it is the 40th year, so I have decided to uh, give you a list of my favorite top 20 and a lot of honorable mentions and here they are, <laughs> oh, what a list, let me go down to the list of honorable mentions first before we go on, the Hockey Talk Man, uh, a man with the longest reign of, reign of the Intercontinental Championship in, uninterrupted for 478 days over a year. And no one's ever come close to that as of yet. So so many people consider him the best Intercontinental Champion of all time. The Ultimate Warrior who won the title in like 30 some odd seconds against the Hockey Talk Man in SummerSlam 90, uh, 98, uh, 88. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Perfect, who won, um, who won the title in a tournament after uh, Ultimate Warrior vacated it when he became the WWE Champion back in 1990. Texas Tornado was the first guy to beat Mr. Perfect for that title, Kerry Von Erich. Um, Shawn Michaels had a long reign, the Intercont a decent reign of the Intercontinental Championship. Obviously, uh, went on to become a WWE Hall of Famer, um, World Champion and whatnot, so you got that. Uh, Triple H, fellow DX member, also held the Intercontinental title, defeating the um, the Rock. We'll get more to, on him. Chris Jericho. Uh, last night, we're going to congratulate Chris Jericho, become the first ever AEW World Heavyweight Champion. Congratulations to him. And um, he held this title. He was the first person to hold this title, the Intercontinental Championship, and the IW 
GP Intercontinental Championship, and he's got the record of holding it nine times. Curtis Axel's on this list again. Him and his father, Mr. Perfect, became the father, first father-son duo to hold the Intercontinental title. That's why he's on this list. Kevin Owens, um, shortly after he came to WWE, he made quite the impact and became the United States Champion, um, Intercontinental Champion, he had a Wrestle Champion. William Regal, one of the best British wrestlers out there. I think he's the first, second British superstar to capture the Intercontinental Heavyweight title. One of the best out there. Eddie, the late great Hall of Famer Eddie Guerrero. Intercontinental, former Intercontinental Champion. Seth Rollins needed this title to complete the um, the Grand Slam. He has done that. Stone Cold Steve Austin, he uh, had a fall um, long battle to uh, become the new Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion. Um, obviously, he went on to become World Champion, Hall of Famer. Unbelievable. Uh, Randy Orton is also on this list. Uh, first, third, uh, second, third generation superstar to capture this title as well. Ahmed Johnson, the first African American to capture the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. Goldust. I think I, I think with Goldust, Goldust won the best champions ever. Big E, for, uh, first major championship after being a former NXT champion. CM Punk also held the Intercontinental title. Rob Van Dam, and uh, and then you got the Macho Man Randy Savage who. Went on to become world champion after winning a tournament in WrestleMania 4. Um, the rest, previous WrestleMania, he was the Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion. All right, those are my honorable mentions. Uh, good list to start off with. Um, my top personal 20 favorite Intercontinental Champions. Uh, top 20, Razor Ramon. Now, Razor Ramon was the bad guy. He he started off as a heel. Uh, started off as a bad guy, a.k.a. Scott Hall. And... Uh, he became good when Money Incorporated harassed him for losing to the one two three kid. But that parlayed him into superstar to the point where when Shawn Michaels was stripped of the Intercontinental title uh, at that point because um, he was suspended for steroids. And um, they had a battle royal, a 20-man battle royal to determine the last two superstars to face, um, to face each other for the Intercontinental title was Razor Ramon and Rick Martel. Razor Ramon won it. And it it propelled him a superstar. In fact, he was the first four-time Intercontinental Champion at the time. So, held his title on many occasions. The Big Show. The reason why I put him on this list because he's probably the biggest man to ever hold the Intercontinental Heavyweight title. Uh, also, he defeated Cody Rhodes to get the title, which was the last title he needed to complete the Grand Slam. So, so got Big Show there. Now, number 18, Ric Flair. He beat Carlito to become the Intercontinental Champion. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Because Ric Flair, I think, never held the Intercontinental title. He's held the United States title. He's held the tag team title. Ric Flair, in a way, he's a Grand Slam champion because he held the United States title. I'll tell you what, and this was the last title he needed to become a Grand Slam champion. And he obviously was a, a world champion 16 times over. Congratulations to the Nate. It was, it was a congratulations in order for the Nature Boy. Ray Mysterio, another uh, gentleman who held the, held the Triple Crown. He needed this to get the Triple Crown. Ray Mysterio. One of the best, and um, obviously he was a world heavyweight champion, but, you know, he was a big name that captures the Intercontinental title. I thought it was really cool. Uh, number 16, John Morrison, is, a.k.a. Johnny Nitro. Um, he made a huge impact when um, capturing this title. So, uh, all I know is he's one of the best champions. One of the best champions. He held the title three times during his tenure in the WWE. Cody Rhodes. Now, I would, I would have said him and Goldust were the first uh, set of brothers. No, it was the Hearts, and they're on the list, obviously. Uh, Cody Rhodes was uh, was the man that brought this version of the Intercontinental Championship back. Let me just uh, brought this version of the Intercontinental Championship back. He felt like it was it would be more prestigious if it was like this. Instead of the Attitude Era Intercontinental title, so it looks good. So Cody Rhodes, thank you, and uh, thank you for bringing this version of the championship back. I thought it was totally awesome of you to do so. Now, why did I put the Godfather in this list? Well, the Godfather has a lot of fun with, the late, with his ladies and all that. And I thought he, you know, he held the Intercontinental Champion for a short term in 1999. I thought, you know, he he, he would make a good, cool Intercontinental Champion. He's worked very hard to get himself a championship, so this was, this was his first major championship in the WWE, so the Godfather, I'm pretty happy for him. Um, Dean Ambrose, Dean Ambrose has had a lot of titles. He's also a Grand Slam champion. Obviously, he's, he's left for AEW. But I think uh, 
as John, and he's returned, he's de- there at John Moxley, but he held his great title, Dean Ambrose. Diesel! Diesel, prior to Big Show holding it, Diesel was the biggest man to capture the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. I thought it was really, really cool for that history to be made. So, that's number, he's number, number 12. Number 11, Tio Santana. Um, a couple of years ago, I had the honor of meeting him, and I have a picture with him. Had I bought this title years ago, I would have uh, had him sign it, but, you know, uh, Tito Santana was the first recipient of the brand new Intercontinental Championship design back in 19, was it 84? So, uh, I thought, back in, was it 84? Was it 84? Yeah, 84 when this new design, but it had the different WWE logo when it was World Wrestling Federation. It was an all-in red. But, no, nevertheless, uh, Tito Santana, I had, you know, honor to meeting him. And that's why he's on this list. Okay, as well as the top 10, my favorite 20 of my top 20 favorite intercontinental champions. Number 10, Shinsuke Nakamura, the first Japanese superstar to capture this version of the intercontinental heavyweight championship. He's the, uh, but he's also the second, but he's the second man to capture the IWGP and WWE intercontinental champions, uh, championships. All right, number nine, Roman Reigns. I think Roman Reigns, this was the only title left. Also, he needed for the Grand Slam championship. He's held the United States title. He's held the tag team title. He's held the WWE title. So Roman Reigns says, you know, like Seth Rollins, he needed this title to complete the Grand Slam. So that's why he's on this list. Number eight, Finn Balor. This was his first major championship since the being the NXT champion. I know, I know, actually the Universal title. Excuse me, he was a Universal title, but he was injured. But a good, decent ran of the Intercontinental title until uh, Shinsuke Nakamura beat him at the Extreme Rules kickoff to become the champion. Kofi Kingston, number seven. He's held this mountain title on many occasions, probably five or six different times. And finally, he worked hard to become WWE champion. And that's why he's on his list. Number six, Ricky Steamboat. Him, Macho Man Randy, Randy Savage, WrestleMania three will go down to one of the best Intercontinental Championship matches. And he walked out with this before Honky Tonk Man beat him for it. He's number six. Number five, Bret the Hitman Hart, one of my favorite. The Hart family's been my favorite wrestling family. And Bret Hart... Um, after losing the tag team titles back in uh, early 91 to the Nasty Boys, along with Jim DeAnvil and Nyhart, um, he went on a solo career and beat Mr. Perfect to become the Intercontinental Champion at SummerSlam of 91. So Bret Hart had a, well, 1991 was a decent year for the Hitman. Um, number four, Roddy Roddy Piper. This title was his first major championship in his illustrious career in the WWE. Bret Hart was, supposed to, was slated to have a rematch with the Mountie for the Intercontinental Championship at the Royal Rumble in 1992. But a 105, 103 fever prevented him to do so. So Roddy Roddy Piper decided to step up and make history, becoming the first man to go after two titles in one night. But he succeeded in defeating the Mountie to capture his first major championship to become the Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion for the very first time in his career. So that's why Roddy Roddy Piper is my favorite Intercontinental Champion on the list. Uh, number three... Owen Hart. Owen Hart, by Owen Hart becoming the Intercontinental Champion, him and Bret Hart are the first set of brothers to capture the Intercontinental Championship. And he's one of my favorites, too. He defeated Rocky Maivia for this title. Number two, the British Bulldog is on this list. The British Bulldog defeated Bret the Hitman Hart at SummerSlam 1992, which also will go down as one of the best Intercontinental title matches. In fact, it was the first time the Intercontinental Championship was the major main event to um, to close out the show, close out any um, event at that time, and uh, he defeated Bret the Hitman Hart to become the Intercontinental Championship uh, Intercontinental Championship title holder before losing it to the to Shawn Michaels at October's Saturday Night's main event. And uh, we're trying to get him to the Hall of Fame. Uh, um, TeamDBS.com is where you want uh, to we'll check out and. Say, hey, I want the British Bulldog in the WB Hall of Fame, but he was one of the best Intercontinental Champions, one of my favorites. And the number one personal favorite Intercontinental Champion of all time, you guessed it, The Rock. This title has parlayed him into superstar status like never before. When he first captured this title, he, he fought... He fought long and hard for it before losing it to Owen Hart. But when he captured it a second time via forfeit from Stone Cold Steve Austin, this title has parlayed him to being one of the most electrifying men in sports and entertainment today. Obviously, he went to become world champion. He was a triple crown champion as well. And now, where is he now? 
Hollywood movies under his name, real name, Dwayne Johnson. So, you have The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. This title had made him a very, very popular individual. That's for sure. All right. And uh, I want to conclude. And this was the reason why I am celebrating the Intercontinental Championship because uh, it's 40 years in the making. Because this is my favorite title of all time. I mean, look at I want to show you old guys check out the design here for a minute before we conclude this video. I mean, look at this design. You know, when I first saw this title, I thought it was the coolest championship in history. I mean, look at it. I mean, just, it's so real. I bought it at a good price on Amazon. You know, I pulled a Ted DiBiase, I bought a championship belt. <laughs> no, this is one of my favorite championships ever, and it's just totally look awesome looking. I mean, just, I look at it, and you know, the, the, everything is just, it screams old school. And uh, you got a little bit of new school with the new WWE logo, and uh, a lot of superstars wanted to wear this title. And... And everybody was in favor for it. So, like I said, again, Cody Rhodes back in 2000, I think 11 or 2012, have uh, brought this title back. I thought it was the co coolest thing ever that he did. So, uh, thank you, Cody Rhodes, for that. Um, this is the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship 40 years ago. So, I'm two years older than this, t than this championship title. So, uh, I thought, hey, why not celebrate it? So, this is the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship 40 years ago. Um, that, that's my list that you just saw. It was, it's amazing. Unbelievable. Now I'm the Intercontinental Champion. I'm only kidding. Shinsuke, right, Shinsuke Nakamura right now is the current Intercontinental Champion. Miz will be challenging him. We'll try to tie Jericho for his ninth Intercontinental title reign. We'll see if Miz will do that at Classic Champions. That'll be also on the card as well. A lot of championship matches are on the card for Classic Champions. You know every title is supposed to be on the line in this matchup. Although, I want to speak of the champion, I want to congratulate Kaylee Ray defeating Tony Storm to become the NXT UK, new NXT UK Women's Champion. Um, also, I want to congratulate uh, Flash Morgan Webster and uh, Mark Andrews becoming the first Welsh superstars to capture a championship in the WWE by becoming NXT UK Tag Team Champions. Walter retained his title against Tyler Bate. Um, Noam Dar defeated um, Travis Banks. Um, Joe Coffey beat Dave Mastiff in the... Uh, Last man standing match. In a bonus match, Cesaro defeated Ilya Dragunov. Uh, that was really cool. And at the end, Cesaro uh, shook his hand and hugged Ilya Dragunov. Well, I think it was really good sportsmanship, and my respect to Cesaro for that. I think, in my personal opinion, Cesaro should be going after this, too. The Intercontinental title. I believe Cesaro would make a, would make a great Intercontinental champion. i like to see Cesaro wear that title. So, so congratulations to the Intercontinental title. 40 years, hopefully for many, many more. All right, so so that's it. So that's all the time we have on the show. God's blessings, love, life, and light to all of you. Catch you on the flip side. And remember, pay attention. You might learn something. And remember, we cannot change the past, but we can change our present and, present and current situations to work for a better future. All right, this is episode 345. I will see you on episode 346. We've got a lot to talk about on the docket here. So uh, we have yet to talk I'll talk about the Three Stooges top ten list, um, the top lists, um, top fav 20 favorite Three Stooges shorts. I'm happy to get to get that. My top 10, 50, uh, 15 favorite Three Stooges quotes. My top 10 favorite Nintendo Switch games. My top 10 favorite martial arts and action movies. And I've already... Uh, we still have yet the Classic Champions uh, PTW Wrestling Predictions. My top 10 favorite slow songs. And my top 20 favorite WWE fe female WWE NXT superstars under the current contract. That's it. So, I'll see you guys later. Catch you, um, catch you later. Episode 346. Happy 40th. IC title. Alright. See ya.